Okay, hello guys. We are back with another analyzing a TV show video. Uh, first thing I want to say, it might look a little orange, me. Uh, that'll just be me, don't worry. I'll have most of the time the actual footage of the episodes, which is pretty cool footage. Won't be orange, don't worry guys. Um, but I'm going to start doing these more often again. Uh, but anyone who isn't here uh, for the TV show... Which, which is actually why you, why you are here. So I, I don't know, but if you choose to stay around, I do also play uh, video games on the channel, just as an FYI. Uh, in the past, I did more of these TV analyzing videos and gaming. Uh, but anyone who wants to commit to the channel and subscribe, uh, I want you to know that I will be doing these TV show videos more often if that's more what you're into than the gaming. But I will be doing both if you're here for the gaming as well. But anyways, that's not why we are here. You were probably here for the insane two hour premiere that just happened tonight. I don't really know where to start with the epic two hours, but uh, I guess the beginning is a good place. We start with a recap that goes seamlessly into the episode. Like we were recapping the end of last season and it transitioned from Superman and Doomsday charging at each other in the recap directly into the start of the season. Like that already hyped me up. I expected a fight to start the season but we actually just got the smash from Doomsday that leads into an amazingly directed shot through the newly made craters on the moon to Superman's torn up cape. Then we get the entrance of Lex Luthor for the season. The car pulls up, he steps out, and you can hear that first part of his theme. And you know it's him before he even shows his face. We then go to uh, an another directing choice that put a smile on my face, but I mean, I was already smiling a lot <laughs> after the opening. Uh, but we see Gramps, Lois's dad, General Lane in the flesh, um, but anyways, the directing I liked was the fact that the camera was in the bag he was held in and the lighting continued to go out and gave the audience the same claustrophobic feeling as him. Uh, by the way, if you don't know why I'm excited to see General Lane in, in the flesh, uh, it's because uh, once it was announced that there were budget cuts for this season, it sounded like they weren't, like they were just going to kill General Lane off, uh, off screen and he wouldn't return. But he did. Uh, I was actually uh, more scared for his life uh, than anyone ever on this entire show through this episode because I still wasn't sure if his actor was staying. Um, and uh, for those of you who stayed long enough on the channel, you know I, I have an extra soft spot for Gramps. Uh, but anyways, we see poor Gramps captured and get a heartfelt conversation between uh, Jonathan and Jordan. Uh, Lois sees a little so sign thingy that says it went by so fast, which for some reason gave me chills. Like, out of nowhere. Um, I guess it applied to the show for me and how fast the show's gone by and got me a little sad that it's ending. But anyways, we see our first flashback for the episode, which is the first of many, where Clark has just told Lois his secret and she he wants to go up in the bedroom and... I'll turn the Cal Ripken around so he's not watching. Then we go back to the moon! <laughs> Sorry, I got excited again. But this show does that a lot. Doomsday Superman fight is so insane for the budget. I loved it. I was definitely a little... It was a little heartbreaking to me to see Clark stab him with the crystal for a second. I think he actually found his weakness. Like he'd won... Uh, but that's not the case, and I don't know. I just felt like Clark's humanity in that moment. I, I felt for him, but but then then this scene happened. You like it here in this small town? The all shucks and the apple pie. I just love this line for some reason. <laughs> but basically, it's Lex explaining I was I was gonna get his vengeance. Um, um, on the topic of Lex, for one. Throughout these two episodes, he really made a freaking presence of like, he's scary, you know. They did a good job of that, but they've given Lex good motives. He got 
locked away for 17 years for something he never did all because lois pushed and pushed to get him behind bars when he was innocent um but in lois's defense as she uses lex had plenty of other crimes that were never brought to light but the one he went to prison for just wasn't one of those he also missed out on his daughter's life he explains how she was the only one who ever truly loved him and we will learn later actually that his daughter went into hiding right before he was released from prison seemingly not wanting anything to do with him which makes his character all the more tragic we get another flashback Aww. also clark just walked around the entire building with this in his neck and no one saw it but i do want to touch on these flashbacks for a second here uh i interpreted these flashbacks as the overall hope for the story the foreground of this vicious battle between clark and doomsday these were all these memories that clark was living for as his motivation but the flashbacks actually ended up doing two things that make his ultimate death more tragic by showing that these memories actually weren't enough and that these memories are just a reminder of what he and the family is losing then we get gramps talking to this lady yes i know her name but i shall not speak it how dare she hurt gramps lex orders her to shoot him in the head and heart so but gramps gets out of those restraints and boom headbutt and she out then Lux comes in and does this. Then he and gets a good look at the boys, which will be key later. Then we get Lex with hair in the flashback. Sorry, Lex, you're still bald in the present. But this flashback is basically just Lex telling Lois he's innocent and her not believing it for a second. Look at Gramps go. He gets out of there, then... Oh, he got wrecked by Otis. Okay. Then, as if Gramps hasn't been through enough, they start digging his grave in front of him, and Otis be lecturing him about hitting a woman. Then, they throw him in the hole and decide to bury him alive till he suffocates, and they make the dirt wet so he suffers more. It's messed up, guys. Luckily, the fam comes in clutch with Jordan's abilities and this sucker punch from Lois. Then we get some insight into the deeper themes of betrayal that Lex feels because his own daughter turned on him and his desire to do that to Lois by making her boys turn on her. Killing Gramps is a pretty good way to to do that. I don't I don't know if I would recover. Um But anyways, we cut back to the space fight between Clark and Doomsday, and we see a final showdown with Doomsday charging at him as he laser beams and boom explosions then we see doomsday holding his freaking heart what the f i did not need to see that man we pan over to clark's lifeless body and i start to cry wait wait what that wasn't in the episode doomsday comes crashing back down to earth with superman in his hand and chokes him on the street for all to see but mainly taunting the kent family then we get a scene with Lex and Lex and Lex and how do I not remember her name? Did they even say her name? Lex and the, this lady as they talk about getting some technology from a Milton Fine. Hmm. If you are not familiar, Milton Fine is Brainiac from the Superman comics. But they also mention Brainiac's name as well, which is so sick. But like we got eight episodes left and freaking doomsday and lex luther to deal with are we really gonna do that too i sure hope so also looking back at the episode actually her name is amanda and the only dc character i could think of that would be with clex that would be with lex that's not that i've heard of i could research it further but I did a short amount of research, and obviously the character of Amanda Waller is a very known character in the uh, DC universe. She might be Amanda Waller? I don't know. But then we get the final scene, the tragedy of the death of Superman. Lois and the boys react to his death as we get a montage of all of Lois and Clark's flashbacks and memories together. And uh, I'm not crying you are no no I, I definitely cried a whole bunch i'm not gonna lie but now we move on to the second part of the premiere 
titled A World Without. If you don't feel like watching the entire video for both parts, I get it. Just leave and come back and watch later. Or never come back and make me sad. You, you pick. But the episode picks off with the end of the last one, but with more Smallville coming in to see what's happening. The citizens. Uh, Lana and Sarah also appear this episode, and Lana says, Superman is Lois's friend. Her good friend. And they all go away, yay. Totally a reason to just boom out into the sky like no one could totally be watching. But Jordan booms into the air to bring Superman to the fortress. But Lara is there awaiting them and confines him in the suspension, cool, gooey looking Kryptonian thing. Then we see Lex be like, I don't care about my job no more. Superman is dead. Then the goat, Jonathan, realizes that Jordan might have gotten some extra info at the fortress that he, he is hiding. He ends up telling Jonathan that maybe if he can get Clark's heart, he can save him. Jonathan be like, no way. Then Jordan be like, yes way. You better trust me. And now Jonathan trusts him. Yay. I promise the rest of this video won't be like this, guys. We then see Lana explain to Sarah the situation of Lex, Lex's housing, being that uh, Lana approved a document from a side industry of Lex. Yes, he has an entire industry as a side hustle. But anyway, Sarah tells her that she should just stand up to him and kick him out. And Lana doesn't want to be a target if she does this, um, understandably. We cut to Lex in a restaurant as he talks to a manager of Luther Corp, basically telling him he wants to stay in Smallville. And he's like... Then Jordan booms in and confronts him. He yells at him for the heart, but gets too freaking close for Lex to actually see his eyes. Then Lex smacks his hand away and tells him to be prepared to kill him next time. Jordan really fumbled. Lois and Jonathan are at the Gazette when they see Lex waltz into his place. Lois does a freaking kick down the door and says she's gonna get him in prison again. He tells her that he knows Jordan was the Superboy and warns them to never set foot on his property again. Then we get back from commercial for this. You know how many mom and pop shops Luther Corp has put out of business? Thousands. Then Chuck comes in and says, um. The cat. Uh oh. Jordan arrives back home to a very, very loud Lois. Like, I had to turn the volume down when I watch this. Lois tells him that Lex knows who he is and that he wasn't careful. She says he is not his father and they go their separate ways. Jordan really takes this man. Lois didn't mean much by it. She meant that he can't just go facing villains yet. Not that he won't amount to anything like Clark did. But he takes it this way and gets upset. Except Jordan is never good. He starts to hear a heart that beats three times instead of two and knows it to be Clark's heart and decides to go after, even though Jonathan says what we were all thinking. It's a trap. Sure enough, it is. A Superman figurine with a fake pulse uh, is waiting for him in a shipping container and he gets ambushed by men with kryptonite guns. Uh, at the same time, Lex goes to dine at the diner and gets waited on by Sarah, who attempts to stall him until Jonathan can break into his home and find the heart. They really think they can pull this on Lex Luther. At the same time, Lois gets a phone call from Clark? It is not really him, but Lex with a voice modulator? It sounds just like Clark. But I'm not so sure this was Lex. Lois thinks it is. But it is exactly Clark's voice, which then goes into a robotic voice saying that she has to press 1 to save Jordan and press 2 to save Jonathan. We already got a hint of Brainiac and I feel like this was him. Just an early guess. She waits till the last second and presses a number that we actually never see or learn throughout the whole episode, which I think is some uh, really nice ambiguity. Uh, I was practically yelling at her to <laughs> pick to save Jonathan, though, because I feel like Jordan has higher odds with his booms, you know? Although they never answer it, it seems like she picked to save Jonathan, because Lex does not confront him breaking into his place, but instead Lana does and helps uh, Jonathan get out of there. But Lex instead goes to where Jordan is and uses this sound thingy to make Jordan's face turn yellow with 
veins popping out. Jeez, some, some good effects here. Uh, but instead of killing him, Lex brings out Clark's heart, puts it just out of reach, then smashes it with his foot in front of him. While this scene was <laughs> shocking, I was more disgusted by like the graphic heart smashing and like the goo and bits that came out of the heart. Poor Clark. The Kent family talks about them having to realize that he is gone and go say goodbye. Meanwhile, Lex gets some news that his daughter actually did get into contact with the DOD before she went into hiding and apparently Gramps knows. Like, like Gramps was the contact. That'll show you. That's why you don't kill Gramps, you idiots. He has information, bucko Lex. Jesus. Lana drinks some wine with her daughter. Uh, sorry, I meant Lana drinks some wine as she talks with her daughter, Sarah, telling her that she is going to block Lex's deal on the place he's staying at. This is definitely not going to go good. But uh, the final scene shows the Kent family all in the fortress as they say goodbye to Clark. But also see the gift he left them. Uh, he left a hologrammed form of himself in case he ever died for them. This is no recording, but just like Lara, a living hologram. At least we get this, but I guess we gotta wait and hold out for Clark to really come back. I just... I just can't wait to see him come back and boom and destroy Doomsday, man. But I also totally didn't cry in this goodbye scene either. <laughs> Anyways, guys, that will do it for today. I will be releasing a video soon on the teaser for episode three. But thank you all for being here. Please like and subscribe if you feel like it. Uh, and have a good rest of your day. Goodbye where Lara is there waiting, awaiting them, and com confides in them. Well, uh, where Lara is there awaiting them and confines him in the super sub, what the f Who tells him Lex knows he is and that he will...